Hello, and welcome back to the You Up podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. How are you? What's going on? I'm great. I want to address the elephant in the room, which is that, that you have a mustache. I... For anyone listening on YouTube. Well, we're we're we're, we're the drive to 10,000 continues. <laughs> um, we we got, are... I think we got a lot from our plug last week, reminding everyone about the the apartment tour of Jared's apartment. We're like we a hun- 10K. We're at 164 subscribers away from a tour of my apartment. Yes. And I really want to see the apartment too. So if you guys could please subscribe. Uh, better hurry up. I'm moving out soon. So um... <laughs> Time is of the essence, guys. We need 144 subscribers go to the youtube page betches.co slash youtube it is free to subscribe and if you watch the youtube if you watch on youtube hello youtube land i i mean we're doing a fabulous production here that was like it's like real if we good do stuff. say so ourselves yes yeah. pat on the back to us um if you go there like comment there's a there's a there's like a community building there there's a yeah uh that, that all that stuff is like kind of ways to pay for the show like i always you know the, you can support the sponsors if they can support you most of the sponsors have, for, you know, free money just waiting for you. So you might hear a sponsor. You go, oh, wow, this one Let can fit in my life. Code. Right. Uh, or you become a subscriber, the You Up With Benefits. Uh, just what do, where do they go for You Up With Benefits? We just said we don't use Subscribe. the announcements. Then... Be- Subscribe at betches.com. Yeah. So you can do, you know, <laughs> you get to subscribe and you get early episodes and extra podcasts. That's a way to support this show. Also, like at a minimum, like a very nice way to support the show is to like things, comment on YouTube, share the show, with share a friend. it, make it your Instagram story. Like it's all these little things that we do consider. Write an Apple review. Apple review. Jordana reads every single all of one. Them. I and also we just want to say we want to tell you how much we appreciate you as listeners. We love how much you love the show. Mm-hmm. It is a very cool and rewarding thing to have people say that this show helps them through whatever they're going through, whether it be just a ride or a gym workout or something big going on in their life. It really does mean a lot. And I'm in my Zen zone since we just spoke with our guest on Sunday, yes. Preview Town. Something's coming. Jay Shetty. Jay- <laughs> and here it is. <laughs> there, there, that's uh, that's the something. Jay Shetty is, is, uh, is back. Yep. We were, just recorded our Sunday episode with him. He was great. Fantastic. Um, he, he, he does has a calming presence. He does yeah. fill you with hope. Indeed. There he fills I you with calmer. the right perspective. You know what he is? He's like helium. You kind of float when he walks into the room. You know, I he, was gonna say Xanax, but okay. He's like yeah. Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like Xanax. He's like pumping some heroin into your veins. Just feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure he's nice going to love place. that sound bite. Yeah, I don't think Jay maybe. Jay Shetty came in. He, he didn't approve that. <laughs> Jay Shetty, the heroine of podcasters. Um, yeah, so we loved our time with Jay. We're pumped that he came back. It was a really great episode. That'll come out on Sunday. But the mustache. Yes. So you wear it. You have a mustache, which I have to say. I have a, I have a thought on the okay. mustache. There's a thing about the guys with the mustache and... Um, I, I always think that you got to be wary of them a little bit. Right. Are they, are they do they take anything seriously? Is that kind of the, the perspective? It's a little bit of that. And then it's a little bit of it takes such confidence. Right. To have a mustache. That's the, that's me. It's almost like where it's like too much conf- confidence. You know, like a guy. <coughs> I think a right. guy with with weird facial hair is almost trying to show you that he does not even give a shit what you think. It's a peacock. Of He's a not certain trying nature. to impress anyone. Right, and then but then you think about it a little bit deeper, and you go, there are like people who live a life with a mustache. Like but they're like sixty. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> what's the age that's appropriate? Here's like the- everyone talks about how their dad had like a mustache in like the eighties or something. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, you see those pictures and you go, that's a real person that I didn't even think of their mustache. Right. It was just a part of their body. And then when someone suddenly shows up with one, you go, what the fuck is up? What's, what's the occasion? When someone shaves off their mustache that's had one forever. Mm-hmm. It is like they're naked. It's like they walked in. It's like you hose them down with water. With a whole new person. Right. Right. Um, but I think it, it takes, I just be, I'm a little wary if I were dating to date a guy with a mustache because I know that he does not need me. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, he's too he's comfortable confident. with he's himself. He's very confident. Yeah. Comfort, that's if, right. I, yeah. <laughs> You've just put a lot of doubt in some women's Sorry, minds no, out I'm there. Just, well, how long? Well, give me the back. Like, uh, here's where, the back story. So I think what happens with a mustache 
is it of it makes people tell you how they think of you right away. Okay. Like I like walked I in, did. Jorge came up to me and goes, what the fuck did you do to your face? <laughs> that was his first words out of his mouth. I'm sure he did not say it like that. He's pulling. No, he said it. That, oh, I didn't say what the fuck. Okay. What the hell? Was there a hell? Jorge doesn't curse. The tone was fuck worthy. I just said, what happened to your face, Jared? What, what happened? happened? <laughs> what Say happened? Like As that. if you had a black eye. Uh, no, Dude, what no, it was just no, no there was no high was note to like his that? ask. What's that? Like, what happened to your face? No, he goes, what happened to your face? <laughs> that was how he said it. That, and I, I, I think a mustache, it, the weird part about a mustache is if someone doesn't think of you in any terms, okay. they don't mention it. Or they think it's ruined you. Mm-hmm. Or if they're attracted to it, you hear it, it. It it smokes them out. Have you heard that? I that's the problem is that it let has people tell you exactly how they feel about you right away. I've is this had, for a, is this for something that you that you started? You didn't have this. Here's last how week. it went down. I did okay. a little bit of a photo shoot the other night because I wanted to get new pictures to promote tour shows. Okay. You know, I got the New York show coming up. New York and Buffalo. Buffalo this weekend. Please, Buffalo people. I'm sorry. Okay, I said a lot of mean the things. Buff- the North remembers, yes, as they, they say in Game of Thrones. That's right. They remember. <laughs> Buffalo, listen, I apologize. No, I don't apologize. I, I'm being truthful with you. You're sensitive Sarahs. That's okay. They just lost the Bills, and I, I feel horrible. Game. It was a great yeah. game, and the kick went wide right, and that's like very uh, embarrassing. You know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's also something that's happened before. Scott oh, wow. Norwood, this is like brings back old wounds. Listen, to Buffalo people. They're having a bad week. It's been a bad week. Let's laugh again, okay? Come to the show. Bring your friends. This will be- All will be forgiven. I will not bring up the game. I won't bring up football. There will be none of that. We're just going to have fun and laugh. Are you going to talk shit about Buffalo? No, I won't. Because why would I kick a man while he's down? If if they won, you could talk shit. Of course. They're a good team. I feel for them- They've, you know, they've never, you know, listen, Buffalo people come to the shows, please. I, I'm, I'm telling you, you need this now more than ever. So jaredfree.com. I also have town hall, New York City, New York City. I get asked all the time. Hey, when are you going to do a New York show? Hey, when are you at the cellar? This is it. 17th. 17th of February. Come to the show, please. I want you there. Bring your family. This is a great family show. If you, if you're. You know, bring your mustachioed clo- father. Bring your mustache. Bring your dad that looks like the emoji with the mustache. <laughs> Bring them all. Friends, family, it's it's fun for the whole family and the whole group chat. Boston, there's very few tickets left. There's like 15 tickets. So Boston, Toronto. I added a second show. Those are going quick. Come on out. I love Toronto. It's I can't even believe. Like Toronto and Buffalo are like an hour away from each other. Can you believe? Um, yeah. That's like a mansion being like next to a you know a, a dumpster. <laughs> I thought you were. I'm sorry. I I, I lost myself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chicago, there's like 10 tickets left. Charleston, Minneapolis, Royal Oak, Michigan, Boise, Idaho, Olympia, Washington, Vancouver, Denver, San Francisco, Los Angeles, New Orleans, Dallas, Nashville. Dallas is a big room, so bring the bigger group chat. Send. Oh, then we're full. You're good. We got the whole whole Jordana clan. clan. Yeah. Um, So I grew out a beard because my vision for the photo shoot. I'm an artist. Yes. My Indeed. vision for the photo shoot was to have a, beard a bearded okay. in a tux. It was like, I'm going to wear a tux, but it's going to be like the 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 back and forth of like, I'm dirty, but I'm clean. Okay. So I wanted to be in a tux, bearded, and in a bar that was like a, a dive bar. So I went to one of my favorite bars, WXOU, cash only bar. It's in the West Village. It just has this look of like, I'm having a drink at 3 a.m. after the wedding got done, and I didn't go home with anybody. Okay. So that was the look I'm going for. Um, I didn't go home with anybody. Right. That, okay. that, that, so, I mean, it came out pretty good. Oh, that does look good. I wouldn't call that. That's like a, a nice scruff. Right. Good scruff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's how mine grows. Love it. Yeah. So I, I had think that, a, that's great. Great photo shoot. I'm a Thank fan. you. It's yeah. A, yeah I, I'm getting good feedback so far. <laughs> They'll be out by this point. Um, and then I was like, you know what? Um... Like, these are, like, funny. fun pictures. What's that for? This is just to make flyers with. This okay. is the reality of comedy today is, like, but you got to keep, like, if, you, if, you if were I on had it, one, yeah. I don't have any. Um, so then I shaved, and I left the mustache. I'll get, I went clean shave. I usually, you know, right. so 
I went straight edge. I don't. Mm -hmm. I usually just use the machine one, and it only gets a you know. There's a little, a little bit scruff, stubble, right. a little scruff. This I went all the way to the bone, mm -hmm. and then I had the mustache there, and it was really thick. And I was like, let's take it for a ride. Okay. And what you find is that if someone like if a woman likes a mustache, they will let you know they like a mustache. They, what if they, they don't? They'll let you know that as well. You think? Okay. Yeah. That's the problem with a mustache is like you get told what people think of you very. They come out with it. Mm -hmm. Like someone will be like, oh, you look like Mario. And I'm like, okay, that's not what I wanted. Right. And like, I don't need that thought in my head. And then someone will be like, you can tell. Like there's something about a mustache when a it's, woman likes you're it. You're in or you're out. And, and but they're, if you're out, you're they're, really out. Right. But if yeah. you're in, you're really in. in con right. I've never seen a woman more creepy than when a mustache hits her right really like they're like who are these mustache. women they're they're in the dms i'm telling you i okay. i'm 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 just saying it's like our thing with like nine out of ten are good responses right. nine out of ten i get no response i'm just saying that tenth response People who are in are in is or angry you're mario right. you're a fat loser with a mustache so how long are you keeping the mustache um I, literally like an hour from now i did it for this podcast oh, okay. I, I yeah oh, I, i'm not okay. like okay. this isn't my it's new coming, life okay yeah cool so <laughs> guess Just you're wondering. guess you're on the uh, uh, not like side of not, things. It's not my thing, but um, I could maybe see how there's some people who are into when it. People, they're like loud into it. You know, they right. have to let you know. Mm -hmm. And you go, OK, people cool. are like that with beards. I right. think people some people are really into beards. Well, beards are a good cover up for men. That's uh, that's meme has been done a thousand times where okay. it's like, uh, you know, beards are a man's makeup. What is it? Contour. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makeup contour. Makes that, sense. that meme has been done. Got it. So, and you do notice it. Like when I shave, like when I go down to like a straight edge, like I am now, I'm like, what am I? Like a big fat baby face? Oh, you know, I love like, that look. I'm like, Mike doesn't like it. I'm constantly like, close shave, clean cut. Yeah, I don't like it. It's something, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like hiding and under the beard. You the know? best is like one day of scruff. I, in my a one day well that's the one i try to get with my ray the the electric right. that's where i try to achieve it's a good but, look too yeah but i like the photo the photo shoot looks great Thank you guys you. Wait, see yeah it. it'll be yeah. out by now and by now also your episode i think of the j train podcast oh will be yeah out. we I, taped together had such a great time taping the, the j train podcast if you guys haven't watched yet watch it was so fun you can listen to so we play games we uh reveal interesting Tidbits. We review movies. <laughs> we reviewed movies. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a it, right. Isn't it a nice spice of life show? It's. I'm trying to differentiate. I want this to be dating. Yes. 101, and I want that to be like just fun times, talking shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You were awesome. You and Sammy came on. You came on for the first episode. So your episode with on, Sammy I'm at the end. A few times then. Yeah, you're yeah. on two episodes nice. in a row. So for the listeners here, if you like our. If you like me, if you like Jordana, <laughs> but if you like our back and forth at the beginning of the show, I, I would say it was very reminiscent mm. of like what the beginning of the show is yeah, like, but for, sure. for an hour and a half. A lot of banter. We talked about potlucks. We talked about we gave dating we advice. About we news, did news stories that came up. Right. Mm -hmm. So we yeah, we got political. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so what's going on with you since I saw you uh, at the J train taping? Um, I a couple things. I made my first Facebook Marketplace sale. That was Whoa, exciting. Oh, you are a suburban night. Look yes. at this. I sent a. I I put this in a like new the National chandelier. Geographic, <laughs> and the woman gets closer to suburbanite every day. Basically, she's opened a Facebook Marketplace account. She shovels her driveway. Honestly, people buy shit on there. It's crazy. What did you I sell? Sent, I I put in a new chandelier in my closet, a more modern a one. A closet chandelier, closet you chandelier. guys. If you didn't believe me, this house is huge. <laughs> so I <laughs> sold the I, closet I chandeliers. It. The doghouse has a chandelier. I listened it, thinking like, oh, it's a complete piece of shit. No one's gonna buy this, but let's just throw it on there because people are like, people buy stuff on there like randomly. Yeah. And then within two days, I sold it to this like seventy year old woman in Ohio. Really? It was great. Yeah. I was how, like, how, do you I'm, have to send it out to her? She sent me a a, a, a label. I put it on a box. Oh, sure. and off she's it, a pro. Off it Are you yeah. worried that she's like an antiquer and she like took you for I, millions? I think she might have because she was yeah. like, I'll give you like, she's, I was like, it's just for pickup because I don't like, I can't be bothered to like pack it. Yeah. And she's like, no, just put some styrofoam in it. You're fine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, this woman <laughs> really up. wants this yeah. chandelier. Like, like a lot. I'm like, who am I to deprive right. her of happiness? I'm like, listen, 
fine. Send me the package. She's like, oh, it's Christmas. I feel like it's a late Christmas gift. And then, so she Venmos me for the chandelier. Yeah. Um, like $125, which I was like, someone's paying $125 for this piece of shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, she really wants it. She's seen the pictures. You and then I go to her Venmo. She was like, oh, my husband, he like sold my other chandelier. I've been looking for this new chandelier for years. I'm like, oh, this sweet old woman from Ohio, like really, really wants this. So I'll right. send it to her. And then I go to her Venmo after she pays me and I notice she's like buying and selling chandeliers. Yeah, like, this is uh, this is uh, the she, all, the whole Venmo is like chandelier, but bought from <laughs> random person, and then it's like uh, selling it chandelier to someone else. Chandelier Shirley. I probably did. on I guess the this move. Thing must have been worth a, sh a lot of money. You're gonna see her I on Antiques Roadshow. I thought she was using it for her uh, for her whole. Her husband <laughs> no, sold no. the last chandelier. She's using it for her mansion the, to pay the mortgage. You know, she's In got a <laughs> chandelier business. Clearly, I was like impressed. She's like 70 years old. Yeah, I like that. I like um, a swindle. She's probably swindling me. I, absolutely. You know, I respect it. I think she goes to chandelier shows and she marks them up like crazy. Good. But here's the yeah. thing about getting rid of something. Mm -hmm. When you get something out of your home, like a bag of clothes, oh, totally. you don't care how much they sell it for. You Like if you saw her and sell I, it for a million dollars, you go, yeah, but I wasn't going to like right. do anything with it. At you alone, no, like, I feel really, I felt really good. I it's was a like, lifted out of my home right. and I didn't throw it out because I feel bad when I throw stuff out this is i totally understand that feeling it is the guilt yes you feel i have that with like donating clothing i i you know take a bag of clothes every like month mm -hmm. to try and just like yeah, shed just get rid of stuff and when on the way there i'm going J jared you, you don't appreciate anything do you even wear these things why do you have so many clothes right and then i get there and the minute i put it down on the ground the minute she gives me like a charity slip yeah. i like feel like i I feel like Jay Shetty just <laughs> licked my asshole or something. Right, you feel good. You know, like yeah. it's just amazing. Right, yeah. it's like the opposite of consumerism, I guess, or it's like cleaning up your consumerism habits. I, I don't know. I guess, and also, well, I guess. Well, I guess you, it's you, not consumerist because I'm selling it to someone, so <laughs> it's quite consumeristic. But right, but I guess it's the idea. Well, use things is like I think that's like good in the eyes of conservation yeah is. i'm reusing what is it called sustainability right yeah but i i do it's weird that you like hammer yourself up until the moment it leaves your house yeah and then you go well, oh. now i'm like oh i want to just sell random shit in my house i'm like this was kind of fun i want to live with just one knapsack of like two pairs of underwear. You could live like that. Uh, maybe you, maybe you'll see that if you subscribe I want, to the YouTube. Send me some apartment. shit from your house. I'll sell it on Facebook. You want some stuff? I got. No, it. I'm gonna sell it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like we started a business. Send me your weirdest <laughs> item, and I want to see if I can sell it on Facebook Marketplace. That's been in my ass. Um, <laughs> maybe so not. Send me your second weirdest <laughs> item, um, and then tomorrow I'm going to Park City. Whoa! Really? Yeah. yeah have you ever been? I have. I've been a couple times. I think I knew that. Yeah. I'm what are you a fan doing? Park City. It's a great place to good skiing, but you don't have to travel like 16 hours to get there. As far as ease, that was the first thing that came to mind. The yeah. ease is like really it's pretty the... much one of the only places I feel like that with good skiing in America where you could just fly and then it's like I don't know 40 Half minutes hour. From, yeah. from like the place that you, you ski. fly to Salt Lake and then you're like yeah. you literally if you take a right out of the airport you go to Salt Lake and take a left you go to Park City. That's great. Who's going? Um, so it's my younger sister's 30th birthday. Whoa. Uh, my Happy sister birthday. Shira. Yeah, so a bunch of my siblings are going. This is great. Yeah. So are you going to do a uh, uh, vibes only? Uh, what is vibes only? Uh, Oversharing? Oversharing. Well, this, is just, this is just a fun trip. Oh, okay. No That's recording. Great. No recording. Just fun. Just the... Dr. Naomi is going, though. This is great. And then... Um, yeah, it's gonna. Be, we're doing one day of Sundance and one day of skiing. It's still going. It's Sundance till the twenty eighth, I think. Do you get like tickets to a movie? Um, how do, I don't even yeah, know how got, that we works. We got tickets to a movie. You could just buy a ticket to a movie. That's great. At Sundance. Yeah. What a fun thirtieth birthday. Yeah. And there's like, that place is beautiful. That's great. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, I was there for when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Wasn't that the Oscars? Yeah. That, that was, I was that watching was in Salt Lake City. I was oh, in, you I were did watching shows it from there. in like, Salt Lake, okay. and then I decided to stay two extra days so I could go to like, I don't know. I was just like, I'll go to Park City and yeah. stay. I remember I was sitting at a bar watching that happen. I'm like, did he just hit him? 
And yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you have a moment. It's like, that's that our JFK happened? shot. Right, right. You know? Or was like, that, right. Was that a joke? Or like, right. Was a what was that, and you go to your yeah. phone, you're like, what's going on? And right. it was a stunt. It was a joke. It was a, for real. That whole yeah. thing. What yeah. about you? What's going on with you? Um, Nothing. I just sit alone in my apartment until we tape here every Wednesday. You definitely do everything but that. I, I think. You are yeah, out I've been and about. Out, um, yeah. I've been, you know, kind of on dates. Okay. Lightly. Nothing too far down the okay. I went to like a friend's house for like a friend's giving post holiday thing. That was nice to like be oh, right, with my friends. So a, you had to canceled, update people, we yeah. canceled the bachelor party. My brother's bachelor party got canceled. The wedding's off. Um, <laughs> you did this to me. I, I had the I had the reaction. I had the first time he told you did this joke to me. I had the reaction that you guys probably had, which was like, "What?" Right. Um, but then I learned it was just a sick joke. Well, it is interesting how much people want just. Nothing more salacious than a broken engagement. Right. Besides like a divorce involving, um, besides a contentious divorce. Right. A Facebook riddled message right. divorce, uh, you know, Facebook post divorce. I, I, none of this is happening, by the way. Let me just clear The wedding up. is on. Wedding's on. He had some work stuff come up that he had to do. And it was only going to be my brother, my dad, my uncle and I. Right. So he was like, hey, I got this work thing. And we we're like, no problem. Like no one cared. It wasn't like, you know, we all put down a deposit. Right. You know, my dad was like, it's off. Like, I get Delta points. I'll get a Delta E credit. I'm going to use it again anyway. In like two days. Yeah. Right. It is funny, though, because I it was my personal fun test, which is dumb. I would say to people, I'm like, yeah, the batch party got canceled. And then they would go, you could just see their eyes widen, widen. a little bit. Like, With oh, my story. God. On the brink of a story. I'm going to get the yeah. goods. And then I said... I, and I said, yeah, the wedding's off. And they'll go, and you can kind of see them like half smile. They they kind of do the the Grinch in, you know, the the, the little curl. Well, you're like, I'm about to get a story. Uh, yeah. And it kind of goes to the, it kind of to relate it to this podcast. It's like, you can get addicted to that as a single person. Really? Where you, why, is, why is it just single people? I Well, single people have the stories. I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm like intrigued by, mm -hmm. oh, you're saying you're living vicariously. Almost I think sometimes those, yeah. you go to your like married friends and you're like, and this date went, you got to hear about this date. Oh and it doesn't matter if it was a good story or a bad story. And I would be like, yeah, the wedding's on. Oh, and they'll totally. go, what? And I'll go, just kidding. And I you mean, just see immediately they're like not. There's a bunch of single women who work in the Betch's office, and whenever anyone tells me about their dating life, I am like that person. I'm like, he did what? Right. And then, like, I'm I'm like that. Like, yeah, I think everyone is. Like, yeah. and you know, you can get addicted to hearing the stories. You can get addicted to telling the stories. You know, oh, I got the goods. Mm -hmm. I'm bring. You see it like at the comedy cellar. Whenever I perform there, you see like, you know, when someone famous shows up. You can see the crowd go crazy and you're like, you can see that the excitement is about like, I have a story to tell to someone else. Right. Now I've got something. People want and to be then, heard. Right. So I did that joke as my own human experiment. Um, but so I was just here, but I had like things to do. The bachelor started. I had some work stuff and I went to this friend. Did it feel giving. nice to not work for a weekend? It felt good. Um, it it doesn't felt, sound like it felt that good. It felt like I needed to like move on with life. Um, there was a moment where I was like, no one wanted to hear from me anymore. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I got through like my calls to like my brother and then my friends. And okay. then like, even like we, so we went to my friend's place a moment of quiet and yeah. And you're like, all right, now what? It's seven o'clock. Like this is when you talk to like someone who has to deal with you. you okay. Know? <laughs> you know, like, I, like that's when you would normally do a show. They, yeah. Right. And instead of a show, I just was like chilling. Right. I feel and like you don't like to have too much free time. No. And I, and it almost again, feels like that makes you anxious a little bit. And it makes you like sit and think like, you know, we went to my friend's place in Jersey. We did the friends giving thing and it was a lot of fun. It was great to see my friends. I passed out there on their couch, just like shirtless. On purpose? Yeah. We were watching okay. like MacGruber. At like you were midnight. planning on staying there. Yeah. I was, okay. I was, well, I was going to take an Uber home. And then I was like, they had a bed made for me upstairs and I just passed out on the couch. So now I'm like, single idiot on the couch and like the kids come down in the early in the morning like what is that like, you know like <laughs> <laughs> and then i like i shouldn't have slept on the couch because then sunday i was just like a shell of myself i was just like okay you know lurch and i don't know i just like it took until like a couple days ago to like feel right again but i was like you know you're just like 
what do I do with all this time now? Like, I, you know, my friends dropped me off in my apartment and then I was like, I've already talked to them. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, they just dropped you off. Right. right? So yeah. I got this. So that call's done. My parents are like, well, I talked to them. Well, Jay Shetty would probably tell you you should meditate. Right. Yeah. On my own. Maybe we'll do, we'll do, we'll do a guided meditation in this uh, show. That's the next person we'll have on. That's a, yeah. That, that'd be nice. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I was weekend. just like, it was fine. Ish. I guess okay. it was just fine you know like uh it's interesting to explore that though like why you like love working so much well it's avoidant i think right. it's avoiding like again that feeling of like i you know it was nice that football was on mm -hmm. do you think if you were with like a woman that was kind of enjoyed thought. that or you would have been like i would rather be alone i guess i you know i felt foreign from a relationship almost like i was like would we have just been staring at each other no, you'd be staring Doing at the nothing. TV. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I had this moment where I was like, what, you know, am I missing out on something? Should I be sitting looking at a TV with someone or? Right. Would that add? I, guess I don't that, even know. That sort of, I guess, like the prime relationship time is like a Sunday afternoon. Right. It's like, right. what do you do? What are we're we doing? We're just here. And we're just here. To someone. Two yeah. blobs. Right. Right. To blob, someone to blob with. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good hat. Someone, Someone to blob with. Someone to smell like a fart with. Well. Someone to fart with. Someone to make a human blob. What is that song from? Getting to know you. Getting to know you. But what is it from? It's got to be an old movie Getting of some to sort. To take. Getting to know you. Julie yeah, it Andrews. definitely sounds like Julie Andrews. Is it from a movie? Oh, okay. The King and I. Wow. We span generations wow. here. Wow. Gen Z's like, this show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get into the show that let's sucks do it. so much. All right. I like that. Speaking of Gen Z, mm. uh, this is a good Gen Z question. What up, Riz? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is that what they do? Peace a lot of cool. peace signs, peace cool. a lot of banana clips, I think that's like, butterfly clips. I think that's like nine-year-old girls in the 90s. Right. What is it's this? all 90s fashion. What the hell is that's that? Oh, heart? I've seen that. Is that what the kids are doing? They do the, no, they do. You do that. You do that half. Like this? And that's a heart. No, no. Yeah. With your hand? Oh, they do it with each other. Yeah. Oh. And what does that mean? We don't do, this is uncool. Yeah, you do two hands. Or the, yeah, this is stupid. When do you do that? You're being cute. Is that you do that in pictures? A lot of cute oh. stuff going on in Gen okay. Z. <laughs> Ken is like, can you stop calling me a Gen Z? I'm not a Gen Z. Um, <laughs> All right, let's okay. do the email. I'll read the email. What are the kids doing these days? Hi, J and J. First time, long time. I'll jump right Man, in. Do I sound depressing? I just talked about how I was alone in my apartment. No, I think that the singles can relate. I think if there was a person there, people go, it's not depressing. Right, even if you like weren't even speaking to them. Right, but because there's no one there, like because right. I'm sitting makes, next to my. That's the thing. It makes it so human more, made out of pillows. It makes it more socially acceptable to do nothing. I think when there's no one else, when there's someone else there. I was kind of wandering. I kind of like we watch TV all day. Right, and here's the thing: it becomes this thing. Like I've had a couple dates, you know, with with some people, and it's like, why don't you call that person? Like, do something. I'm like. Uh, well, you're not. I don't want to turn it on. You're not you know, at that I comfort wanna, level, though. Right. I think with if you've been on a couple dates, you're not at the comfort level of like I'm ready to commit to a day of nothing. With I, you yeah, might annoy me. I don't want. I, uh, right. Yeah. I don't want you them don't to yet. see me at my blobbiest. That's another thing. Yeah. I mean, you could just like clean up. I was growing not, out my beard. <laughs> yeah, you got things to do. I had things. To what do. are you doing today? Growing out my beard. <laughs> Productive. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm imagining if a guy gave me that excuse for not hanging out with me. I'm growing I'm out my beard. Growing out my beard. I'm tired. I'm growing out my beard. <laughs> Washing my hair. I'm moving this month. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll jump right in. I've noticed on my for you for you page lately a lot of women posting about how they've they've had scheduled and confirmed dates days prior, but in the days leading up to the date and day of, there's little to no communication from the man to confirm. Again, the time and location of these dates are set. Day of, they're making videos about how since it wasn't confirmed within 24 hours, they're not going, waiting for him to reach out in advance. 
I love dating and I've always enjoyed the journey. And personally, if I was unsure about plans that evening, I don't feel like I should have, I would have any issue reaching out on my own to confirm the plans if I hadn't heard. Should women be expecting more assurance leading up to the date aside from days before confirmed plans? Am I going too easy on the men I've dated or do we think this is a mutual task or do we think this is a mutual task where both parties can follow through? Sincerely, communication goes both ways. Was this email sent by Julie Andrews in 1954? <laughs> Getting what to it? know <laughs> you. I don't know. Sometimes I, I'm like. I understand the sentiment. I Listen, that's the problem mm -hmm. is the vibes. The word vibes, to go back to our Gen Z friends, is now in the zeitgeist. Vibes, vibes, vibes. That's all you hear. There is a pre-first -date, date vibe. Mm -hmm. There's no avoiding that. There's no avoiding the idea that, like, someone really isn't giving the vibe that they're pumped about this date, even though I've never met them before. Right. You do. And well, I felt that. I've given off that feeling. It, it, it exists. Mm -hmm. But I, I do. Th go ahead. I'm, I'm saying, but do you ever get be like, are you ever surprised then when you actually go on the date that the vibes are totally different in person? Rarely. Rarely. It's usually just fine. Okay. Like, I think this is kind of why, hey, let's plan a date for next week is just, like, generally tough. Okay. Because you go, okay, now we have nothing to talk about unless we do this first date over this text conversation. It's a three bears situation. Text too little, text too much, text just right. It's hard to find right. that. And I understand where this question comes from. I get it. I do think it comes from a place of fear and it comes from a place of, I don't want to make a wrong move to ruin this date. But I think the minute you go, what's my plan tonight? Mm -hmm. Is the minute you text someone, what are we doing tonight? Right. Yeah. I you think know, we have a plan. no issue with, with we, I, I would text to confirm a date. That's for my time. That's more empowering than waiting for them to text me and then saying I'm out if they don't text me. That's what I don't get though. It's like, you know, can we understand why this is confusing for everyone? That it's like, we're empowered women. And then it's like, well, if he doesn't text me to let me know. Well, it's that's a like little the whole bit thing of a hypocrisy. You well, know? that's the whole feeling of like the game is mm. like, um, you know, how much should I, can I, should I be pursued or can I be the, can I make the move? Does that make me feel too available? Right. And I would say owning ownership of your own time is hot. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, I think you Agreed. learn that pretty quickly. Like if it is much more empowering and much more confident to say, Hey, are we going still going out tonight? Where do you like, uh, are we still on? And I right. think that that saves you so much time instead of being like, well, I'm going to wait until 3 PM. Mm -hmm. And then if he doesn't text me by then, then I'm not going. It's like, then you've just wasted more hours of your own day. You fix me up with someone. I'll be open and honest. Yes. You fix me up with a friend, friend of a friend. We'll call it. Sure. Loose connection to you. Yes. Um, I texted light back and forth. When are you free? The text then, well, Monday works Tuesday. I got a dinner Wednesday. I got a dinner and I go, Oh, Monday sounds great. Sunday rolled around. And I was like, shit, the bachelors starting right. on Monday. That's a job for me. I, I take that seriously as, as dumb as that sounds, even as I say it. I mean, if you get it, you get it. Right. Yeah. On Sunday, I was like, hey, Monday ain't going to work. Did you say The Bachelor's on? <laughs> I, I didn't. I just said I'm I am. growing I, out I, my beard <laughs> and The Bachelor's on? <laughs> hey, I'm so alone. <laughs> you just said Monday's not going to work. I go, Monday's not going right. to work. I didn't realize I had this thing scheduled. Can we do another day this week? I know you had those dinners. I'm, I'm down to do like a happy hour thing. Right. You know, I wrote whatever I wrote. They were very cool with it. Right. And then they were like, yeah, and if it doesn't work out, we can do it in the future. Like they were, you know, they gave me all the options. Okay. Um, Tuesday rolls around or Wednesday rolls around to today, today. Wednesday, <laughs> today, the day yeah. of the date. I sent a text like 11. Okay. That's fine. To me. You've also just talked about the date two days ago. Right. Yeah. But but I guess this is kind of in the story of what this person I'm, I'm I'm giving. I guess I'm saying like if they got back to me and they were like, it's 11. I've already planned my day. I didn't think you were going to do anything. You didn't make a plan. 
I'd be like, thank God I'm not going out with right. this person. I, mean, I would be like, this, this person, you could have included me in that conversation. You could have been like, hey, I'm planning out my day for tomorrow. I'd like to get ahead. Whatever right. it is, that would be more. Agreed. A, you know, I, 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 but they didn't. They didn't. They said this time we're, you know, they're they're right. on board. And, and I don't think less of them for being on board. I hope they don't think less of me for being 11 o'clock. Hey, here's a spot. Let's get together. Like, this is the first day. Yeah. You know, no you one know, knows each other really much. No, you're right. Yeah. So I'm, I was like putting myself in the scenario of like when I would be annoyed. I'd be annoyed if someone was like, well, you haven't planned and it's the day of. I'd be like, well, good right. fucking I luck, mean, it'd be one, loser. The, the only time that would be an acceptable response would be like if I texted you, if, if we were going, we were supposed to go on a date, I texted you at 10 a.m. Right. You don't answer me until I say, hey, we're still on for tonight. We're supposed to go out at six. You text me at five. Hey, I can't make it. Or even like, yeah, still on. Like that would be kind of annoying if you waited until then. Again, these are the vibes that we're coming back to mm -hmm. where it's like. Even if you confirm, like, I think if you wait a long time and to to confirm after someone's already asked you, that's different than you not saying anything until then. Totally. And this is this is where this podcast, like where I think we're good. But I also think it's our biggest issue mm -hmm. when it comes to dating virality. Because we're going to sit here and go, depends it's on a the feeling. It depends on the, right. <laughs> it depends on the context. Like, it's a feeling. It's a vibe. I know. And let's just say, and I will, if you want to rule, however you feel, they feel. Okay. You know, like, no one is bad at texting. Cut the shit. Everyone's within of a standard deviation of each other. So if you're sitting there Monday at 10 a.m. going, hey, pumped to get together tonight, just let me know where we're going and I'm game. And then at 6 p.m. they go, just seeing this, how does Denny sound? <laughs> I think it's within your rights to be turned off. Like, to hey, go, I didn't hear from you. Didn't hear from you. I, I understand. Didn't hear, you know, didn't hear right. from you. I, um, I made other plans. I'm going to have to cancel. And I, and I think the hardest part about that in this dating age we're in is if you've gotten to the point where you wanted to make a date with someone, it becomes this like sunk cost uh, thing where you're like, I got to make this work because I liked them before. No, no, no. You liked them before and now they fucking suck. Right. It's okay you to like don't really know them. push this hand to the middle. And I that's the problem is we feel like we know these people because we're texting on the same phone that we do our brother, our mom, our dad, our sister. But this is a bad hand to push to the middle at a certain right. point. And it's no shame on anyone. It's just not the right match. And I think that a lot of times when pe these people are like, if they don't get up the day of, if they don't have a plan ready, if they're not ahead of you, they're really just, right. and just giving just themselves care. a rule to like not be wrong. Like the person who wrote in, like, take matters into your own hands. I think that's hot. Right. If you, you never, have you ever been have you ever been turned off by someone trying to confirm your date for no, that night? Ever. Never. <laughs> never. I, if anything, I'm like, fuck, do this I want to go? This desperate loser wants to make sure we're going out tonight. Well, <laughs> right. That, that, no, it's all, if, if the, the person that texts me the day of, hey, let me know the plan tonight uh, so I can yeah. work out my day. Whenever I felt anxiety about that, it's like, did I want to go out with them in the first place? Well, that's the and other. That, yeah. So that's the other thing. It's like sometimes there are times when I would hope that someone wouldn't wouldn't confirm the date because I didn't really want to go. So that's right. a reason I might say I'm not going to text them. If they text me too late, I'm going to say I'm out. But I'm kind of hoping that that happened. Right. Two people who want. <laughs> right. Nothing is funnier. I wish we could like watch two people who wanted to cancel. Right. Not Just kind of hoping the other right. one did it, and then waiting it out, and then one person either messages or. I don't know. I feel like I've been on at least one in one situation where no one texted each other and we just didn't go out. <laughs> Never just disappeared into the yeah, ether. Yeah, we just both we made the plan like tentatively and then no one followed up on it. Right. If 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 you want like a policy to live by, here's the policy. The morning of the date, wake up, hey, get my get my plan ready for the day. Right. Let still me, on. Let, yeah. may, let me know if we're still on and where I should meet you. I'm good for seven. Right. Give one piece that you're like hard and fast and seven's good. And if you do that that morning. Take matters into your own hands. Yeah, that's hot. That's just a normal person. Mm -hmm. This whole like, maybe they'll figure it out in there. And I, I, listen, I understand that it's hot when someone makes a plan. Right. And confirms that plan. But I agree with you about like the date 
it's a little weird when it's like you set up a date for the next week and then yes. there's no speaking. Um, it's hard. And then there's only the, I mean, I think you could, I think you could still be excited about a date the following week and not speak to someone throughout the week. I've definitely done that. I don't really enjoy speaking to people that I've never met that much. There's a way to play it. Like yeah. all things. Like if, if that were me in that scenario, Hey, great to meet you. Let's make a date. Oh, you can't get together until next Tuesday. It's like Tuesday. Yeah. Great. I'll follow up with you on Monday. Like Perfect. I always set a plan yeah. for the plan. So I, I, and I think if this is maybe good for the guys listening and this has always felt right to me, I, I'm no expert. I'm just here mm -hmm. talking out of my ass, but it's always felt nice to go. Um, this was really nice to like close a text. Some, I, I, I love that. Right. This was such a nice conversation. I'm excited to go out next week. Tuesday sounds good. I'm sure schedules change. I'll check in with you on Monday to make a plan for Tuesday. Right. And now you've, now it's. Now you can like. Uh, it's organized. Put it away. Right. Right. And I now like I don't have to, to how was your weekend? Right. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I wouldn't want to chat with someone about how my weekend was before I met them. Right. We'll talk about that on the date. That's date one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, it's, it's helped me And this, you know, I don't think I always did this, but I do it now. It's a great power move. Love it. Hey, this was such a nice conversation. And even that you can make your more own. your own. Yeah, sure. that sounds very professional. Hey, great talking. Good for Tuesday. I'll check in Monday with a plan. Right. Have a great week. I also like that because you're letting the person know they're not going to hear from you until Monday. Right. Let's just. And then both, we can both put it, put it away. That's our next meeting, textually. Right. Let's do some awkward right, encounters. We All love right. an awkward encounter. Now, I've heard that. People are wondering what our email is. We never say it. UUP at Betches.com. UUP at Betches.com. And don't, like, check in with us to see. You think uh, I've got I've got a good one for you. Send Just it in. Just send it. Just send it. Or if you want to leave a voicemail. We haven't gotten that many voicemails. Love a voicemail. I know, and we actually don't say the voicemail that often. That so if you're wondering do. what the number is, we're going to tell you. And it's okay that you ask because we don't say it that much. Right. The voicemail is 212-589-8903. If you're someone who's better with speaking than with writing, uh, leave a voicemail. I love love those. You get to hear the the tone of voice. I'm an oversharing listener. I love those. There's been there. some voicemails there. Yeah, it's great also because I don't have to read as much. Right. Uh, Great. And what? If you, and if you didn't want to write jot this down in your notebook, as you you're probably listening, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> go to the you up Instagram page, you dot up dot dot podcast um, and go to the click the contact button. And it'll give you all the ways that you can contact us if you don't know how or you are 70 years old. That's as simple as it gets. Like, if you don't get that. Yeah. Just keep listening. If you don't get that, then we don't want you show. writing it. Right. <laughs> OK, let's get to one of our nice emails. <laughs> <laughs> awkward encounter. We love an awkward encounter. J and J love the pod. Thanks for all you do. A quick awkward encounter story for you. My boyfriend and I had only been dating for a couple of months when we took a ski trip up to the mountains in Colorado. It should only be a two hour drive from Denver. See, that's the hard place. That's when right. you're doing the ski trip should be, has to be like a week if you're spending hours yeah, that, driving it, from the, it's the Tulum of skiing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All those Colorado ski towns seem to like have issues. Yeah. Just waiting around There's the corner. There's like one direct flight a day. Otherwise, you're right. flying to Denver and you're driving two oh, to four hours. Also, I'm, I don't know. That flight from Denver to Aspen or Vail, it always seems like it's like, yeah, it may, yeah. maybe it lands. You there's, know, a, just... there's like a 60% chance it gets canceled. Right. That's the same with Nantucket. You can't fly into Nantucket. It's just like you're basically like risking the whole weekend. It's all to say Park City is where it's at. Boy, this, this podcast gets more and more relatable every day. <laughs> You can't fly to Vail, Aspen. Aspen, or Nantucket. <laughs> Life is hard. Uh, you couldn't drive forward and backward or, okay. But there was a massive snowstorm that day causing traffic to back up and keep cars stuck on I-70 for hours. You couldn't drive forward, backward, or exit the highway. So we were totally stuck. My boyfriend had to pee really bad. And, we, and when it became evident that we wouldn't be moving anytime soon, I suggested he get out of the car, go into the woods that line the highway. I suggested he get out of the car and go into the woods that, that line the highway. Okay. In his defense, it was majorly blizzarding. And there were cars all around. So instead of going outside, he crawled into the back seat and started peeing into an empty plastic water bottle. Good for you, bro. Best part was when he filled up that bottle, he still had more to go. So he opened the window, poured the contents onto the street, and kept going. 
That's a real man. Mm-hmm. We got married five years later, so I guess not a deal breaker for me. All the best. You're in or out. Are you, you're in or you're out. Great sign a good one. Off. Yeah, good great one. one. Um, I would say two months into dating, I don't, I'm not like mad about it, but Mm. I would need them to be like a little embarrassed. Really? Just a little bit. Yeah. I guess you don't want him like peeing into the the bottle. bottle. Yeah. Give me the bottle. And like in, it's nice that he went in the backseat. Going in the backseat is the nice gentleman way to go. It's okay to do these things. I want a little bit of shame infused into the situation. Right. He didn't just put it against his leg and start peeing in the driver's seat. Right. Unannounced. Right. No, no, no. no. This. You got to say, and I, I, because the thing, here's the thing. I would probably do the same thing if Mm. it were me. It's harder. To do with a vagina. Could you? I don't. I'd have to be. I've never done it, but I have. That's had, if, I've we had get friend, to, if we get to twenty thousand YouTube <laughs> I will be into a, a bottle, um, in a car, in a moving car. I didn't think a woman could do that. I think it's possible. You have to. It's probably messier, or you have to be. I've had friends. Probably. Who have done it. I've had friends who have done it, so it's doable. Wow. Much harder than a penis, but um, <laughs> not <so>. literally. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But I like, especially if I if I felt confident, I would do it. But I would have to be like, oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Yeah. Um, I'd have to be a little ashamed, but I would do it. Just like I'd be okay with a guy who did it, but I'd have him. He'd need to be like, I I can't believe it's come to this. Right. And yeah, no, I. I, I I see myself in the emailer's husband because okay. getting in the back and doing it makes sense to me. Like yeah. that's what I would pull. Um, what if you were with a woman who did this a couple months? In I'd now? be more impressed than anything You're else. I'd it. be like, oh my god! Okay. Like the just the just the physical ability mm-hmm. of getting the and how messy they were. I would want to know. There's urine all over your car, and I'd be like, I expect if there's no urine on my car, I am like, whoa. Okay. Well, this woman, a magician, she does it all. Right? Yeah, magician. This is, um, yeah. I guess you know. I sometimes when I pee in a bottle, I'll just take. I can fit mine in the. Um, You've done the, this. Before. Yeah, where the straw goes in the box, the juice box. That's where I put mine. <laughs> That's where you put your <laughs> my penis. Save it for later. <laughs> Have you ever done this? Oh yeah, pee in a bottle. Yeah, yeah. It, it is what she said about it filling up and having to like pour it out and a do it again. A full bottle is a lot of urine. You pee way more than you think you pee. That and is, if you've been holding it in, there's clearly a lot in there that you. This is true, but also like it. It is always surprising how many bottles I can fill. How many bottles can you fill? It. How many bottles can a man fill if he's really had to fill a bottle? What's well? the most you filled? I I just like re- Poland Spring. 20 it's ounce? been a while since I've peed in a bottle because we don't do much driving like this. But I've definitely filled like a like a you know one like of those one liter oh okay Poland Springs. Wow, like a real man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I. It would be annoying to have to pour it out, so it's it's best horrible. To I I wouldn't have poured it out the window. I would have opened the door. That's a better pour right, yeah, so it doesn't go on the side the of the car. car. Yeah. yeah, that's gross. Yeah, that's a good idea. Open the car door. Well, that's the down. pee I would have done. I would oh, The pee you do is between the door and the hinge and the... You pee right out of the car? Yeah, you open the door and then the, you pee between the... The In door, traffic? the opening of the door and the hin- uh, and the door. You know the hinge? Am I explaining this correctly? In traffic? They're stuck. And the so door covers you, oh, you. The door is open, and then you're just peeing right out the side as if it's a urinal. Yeah. So it's like the door is your wall. So you open the door of the car, you stand between the car and the door that's open, and you pee in that little V that's right there. And you've done that multiple times. Maybe over 100 times. That's like wow. a tailgate way to pee. Have you done this, Jorge? Jorge? Never. Never, Never. peed outside? Candace, oh, ever peed in a car? Okay. Yeah, well, that's a that's a much trickier situation. The, the another pee I do is you, you take a knee, and then you take. Do you if just you're prefer wearing, to not go to a wrist? I, I'm I I've peed everywhere. I, yeah. I what's, what's the other? You take a if you're wearing shorts, you take a knee, and then you pull the dong out of the hundred s- times you've done this. I've done this many times. Okay. You take your penis out of the side of the, the shorts. Car, well, this isn't a car. I'm saying like if I was out. At a field. <laughs> like, this is just a regular side. Yeah. <laughs> I was at a bar. <laughs> Sheep's Meadow. Well, you're in in a, time, oh. you know, if I was in oh, shorts, I would take a knee 
and then you take your penis out of the side of the shorts and you just pee next to your leg. You've done this in Central Park. I've done this. Yes, I have. We found the Central Park flasher. That's me. <laughs> the take now, it out of the police showed the, up. Now the mustache is all, it's this all is coming it. together. I pee anywhere. A level two sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. It's good to know about you. If I'm oh, I'm a, a big peer if outside. If I ever go on a car on a the road woods. trip with you, I'm going to make sure we have a two liter bottle. Have it soda. ready. I, okay. I'll do that. Woods, golf courses. Wow. Yeah, Al, side yeah. of the house. I mean, we we all remember the the great alley debate. There was the a woman, big debate. The one people really got. No one in this room was on your side. But the DMers were. Yes. I got a lot of support online. Never about, heard. Right. I've never said that before. If you're if you're new here, <laughs> there was a red flag or deal breaker about a guy on a date on the way to the. They left a concert on the way to the bar. He peed in an alley. Yes. Um. And I said it was a deal breaker, and Jared said he would do that. Or I defended that. my brother in arms. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it was my him. death. Yeah. Let's do another email. Let's do it. Okay. Dear J and J, I'm a pretty new listener to the pod, and I want to truly thank you for your honesty and expertise you both give when it comes to the insanity that is our dating lives. Well, thank you for writing in the kind words. Yeah, I thought it was about time I sent in a relationship quandary of my own. Quandary. I met a guy through a mutual friend back in August at a concert. We only ended up talking at the end of the night for about 20 minutes, but immediately there was a connection. Keep in mind, I'm very much an avoidant dater, so when I like someone, it's a miracle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I hate when people do that. It comes off so conceited. It's conceited. Yeah. It's Carrie I Bradshaw. I never like anyone. Yeah. How about you? No like, one is ever good enough for me. Right. Let's. Uh, and this is probably the crux of this person's dating issue. Right. Calling it a miracle that you got a good twenty-minute conversation. What kind of an attitude? Maybe is that? you're the bad conversation. Yeah. Afterwards, my friend. I'm sorry. She seems nice. <laughs> Afterwards, my friend told me that he thought I was so cute and had asked for my number. However, we did not live in the same city. Me in Vancouver. Yes, Jared. Already got my tickets. Thank you. Oh, I just talked major shit. You're great. <laughs> love the cove. And him back in my hometown. But the kicker is that he is applying for his visa to live in India for two years. So I didn't think to pursue it much further. We did end up texting a few times here and there over the next month, but I still was going on other dates. Fast forward to this past Christmas when I went back home where he lives. By this time, we hadn't talked at all for three months but part of me knew i wanted to see him you know fuck around and find out i don't know if that's the the correct I, yeah, uh, use of that term, I, maybe. Yeah, well, well, so i confided in our mutual friend and she's she from said, canada they do things differently that's there. fair they're a little behind yeah so i confided in our mutual friend and she said i should just shoot my shot well he agreed to meet up and our date lasted nine hours <gasps> a miracle easy it's like <laughs> only i feel like only women count the hours mostly only. easy you conversation know what that was him? one date <laughs> <laughs> he tried to get blown for nine hours. Well, this is a good, like, are we dating? <laughs> right. um, easy conversation, flirting, lots of laughing, which never happens when I go on dates with other guys. There we go. You again. never laugh? <laughs> Maybe it's hard. Good thing you're coming to the show. I had to... <laughs> <laughs> I ended up meeting his grandparents as well, who couldn't believe what? we had only met. Oh, hello. Who's this it's young the, lady? Everything. People come Our story. Oh, yeah, our story is, page is writing itself. She has romanticized this. And his puppy came out and I held it and he only licks people he likes. And then the puppy licked my pussy. And they were like, oh, he only licks the pussy of the woman that will be the wife of this man. And now and there you go. <laughs> I felt so comfortable around all of them. And as an introvert, I rarely find that easy to do. Nothing makes this woman happy. <laughs> she hates everything. Everything. Usually. I've never smiled until this moment. We hung out one more time where we did end up hooking up before I flew back to the city. The sex was great. Lots of communication, foreplay, and more laughter. And lots La of grandparents. Laughs abound. <laughs> it certainly didn't feel like a first time hookup. I could just tell we both felt this was special. We talked all night, just getting to know one another, and I already felt myself falling for this guy hard. Since then, we have called once, and he is planning on visiting next week due to an appointment concerning his visa. I was also seeing the whole, the whole I've got to renew my visa, so let's see each other. <laughs> yeah, I got one. this visa thing. <laughs> yeah, I got a Popeye. I was also seeing this other person in Van, but it ended because I didn't feel a strong romantic connection, especially when I compared them to hometown guy. 
So here's my dilemma. Do I keep making an effort to see him when I can, only deepening my feelings for him, even though the odds of ever starting a relationship with him are extremely low, or call it quits and go back to my regular programming of mediocre hinge dates and staying single until the next perfect guy falls into my lap who hopefully isn't moving to India? All the best from a girl who probably already knows the answer but wants Jared to shit on her dating life anyway. Well, we've done that. Yes. She got part two already. Right. Um, what do this you think? is very Vancouver to me. You know what the weird Van, thing? As they Van call Town, it? Couve, the Couve. Yeah. Does anyone call it the Couve? <laughs> I don't think. I think it's just me. Um, what I noticed about that, like Vancouver's like talking about like Denver and like having to drive to Aspen or Vale or, you know, all that stuff. Vancouver has everything, like literally everything. Yeah. The the sea, the mountains, the city, industry, okay. beautiful people. And all the people did there the last time I was there was complain about how much they hated Vancouver. And the I was people like, people who live there don't right. like it. They, 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 and I think their taxes are really high and that's like a part of it. So you feel like it's like California ish. It's even worse. I think it's Without like warm. Right. And then they're like, there's this like big thing of like, here, look at I look at how much I pay to live here where there's things wrong still. Right. Like any city has things wrong. And I always I would say to a lot of them, I was like, where are you going that has this? Like, where are you going Somewhere where it's warmer? like it's not even that cold. It's like yeah. Seattle. Like it's okay. like it's pretty temperate. Like they they don't really get snow unless you go to the mountains. But you can go to the mountains. You can go to like right. Whistler. Like it, it it is it's like the most beautiful place you've ever seen. I'm like, but I'm just like if not here, where? Like, you want to go to Miami? I get it. But, like, I don't know what your what magical place you're thinking of. And to me, this person speaks in those terms of, like, I never do this. It's always, this guy's perfect. Oh, you know, like, the grandparents. It's all just, like, an inflated use of language that you're not even, like, thinking of right. the reality of what you've got in front of you. The reality is you had a nice date from someone with someone from your hometown or the someone that lives far away and they're going to India. Yeah. Plain and simple. And you want to get to know them more. Right. So why not? So you're it, saying she should just keep going at it and keep going at it. And I think what you got to do is like, is be a little bit more upfront than maybe you would with guy who lives down the street saying what? Hey, I have a connection to you. I really felt it. We had a great date. He doesn't know the nine hours, but you say, we had a nine hour day. Like you have your to grandparents say- grandparents loved me. Your grandparents liked me. We had a nine hour day. I don't generally connect with people as quickly as I connected with you. Right. Not I hate every date I've been on right. besides you. Right. <laughs> right, that's a bad way to go. Yeah. I, I never laugh. You know? <laughs> okay, what's wrong with you? Yeah. You know, I would just say like, I've connected with you in a way that I haven't connected with most people. And I really want to explore this. I know you have India coming up, but like, can we figure out some plan? Right. If you're on the, if you feel this similarly, can we put some dates on the calendar? Yeah. I mean, you have nothing to lose. Right. I don't He's even. moving to India. Right. And then if he moves, there will be a time if this gets more serious. And again, the way they speak is just so extreme. The, the odds of it ever starting a relationship with him are extremely low. Says who? Uh, says, yeah, well, I don't know. Right. I don't think they're very low. You've met someone you connected with. Right. What's their India program? Maybe Jorge. Jorge went to, she went to China. He goes right? to China. Yeah, right? and is married to the woman. Yeah. So, like. How long was she in China for? Uh, China, we did about a week, and then we went to Japan and Cambodia for oh, right, another, Cambodia. like, couple weeks. Right, yeah. like, but you were two people like negotiating. She was leaving. Sure. She was originally leaving for, like, a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. um, yeah, she was in Europe and then kind of changed her travel plans. Like she was just she was already traveling. Right. right. I just think there's nothing to be lost in exploring the connection. You're meh about everything. <laughs> so why not explore it and, and have a little fun? I think that's great. And advice. a little bit of hope. Yeah. And also then like it's nice because then you'll get to play it out either way. Right. Go out with them more. You might not even like them after date. Three. Right. Who knows? Like she's built this into like. This is like the connection of the century. It's like you're putting this person a little on a pedestal because they're out of reach. And let's say it fails. Well, now you have better taste right. than you did before. Your taste before sucks, if I'm to be yeah. honest with her. Your taste is a very negative taste. Yeah. Everyone's, uh, well, that's I what, never yeah, that's laugh. That's what your reality is going to be. Right. right. So, like, now you go, to me, it's, uh, you know, 
it's, it's, it lives in a hopeful land. Wow, you, I do connect with people. Wow, I do have the ability to feel really good about right. someone. You know, like this is all positive. Totally agree. And I also think sh by being honest with him, she's going to get the ability to see what the version of him without this built-in excuse looks like. Because right. I do think it's maybe for a lot of men, from what I've learned from you over the years, is that like this I'm going to India thing might make someone have a nine hour date with you and introduce you to their grandparents when they're <laughs> not necessarily interested in a long term relationship at the moment. Right. Um, it might like, you know what I mean? Because they have because you know that they know that. And so they're not th oh, thinking about what they're doing and what that means to you. Having a planned exit for a man frees him up to be who they are in the same way having your eggs frozen freezes frees up a right. woman to be the person that she really is love that you know it is okay. similar as far as like yeah like oh good the pressure's off you already know i'm not a piece of shit <laughs> like right and then you know on the other end of that i don't know what it's like that my egg's frozen but i would understand that someone's like oh well, good like I'm, I'm this isn't like you've taken away my childbearing years right you can be a little bit more relaxed right on the uh on the date yeah. right um but yeah, I think it, you'll find out who, who he really is. I would, again, not romanticize him into being this perfect person. I would just say exactly what you said, which is all that's true. I had a great connection. feel stronger about this than I felt about some other things. I'd love to see where it can go. Yeah, and if you want to look at India as like a positive instead of like, that's when it ends, mm -hmm. that's when I get to talk to him about how we feel. Right. That's when we get to have a talk that makes perfect sense. sense yes the built built it's built an excuse for him it's a built-in reason for you to <laughs> have the uh the reveal what are we the, the reveal exactly let's play some games let's do it uup at betches.com keep sending them in red flag or we love these They're, love them they keep getting better candace just knows how to pick them candace doing a great job this last one okay you ready last one's crazy okay Red flag or deal breaker? He leaves mid date to buy a jewel. <laughs> <laughs> Just think it's so douchey. I'll be right back. I got yeah. a vape. You gotta know that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for all that you do. I just started dating again after getting out of a three-year relationship, and I wanted your opinion on something that happened on my first Hinge date. Midway through the date, I went to the bathroom, and when I came back to where we were sitting at the bar, he was gone. I assumed he had also gone to the bathroom, but when he came back, he told me that he left the bar to go buy a jewel. I was not sure there was a romantic connection <laughs> before this, so I'm debating seeing him again. But interested to hear your thoughts. Is this a red flag or a deal breaker? What do you think? I think it's a double deal breaker. Mm. Because... One, this person has an addiction okay. <laughs> to jewels, right? Um, or else, no He's one, got an issue, no one yeah. leaves the middle of like an encounter to go buy something unless they like really fucking need it. He's not doing well with jewels, right. yeah, yeah. You're and right. two, he doesn't like me enough to at least pretend he was in the bathroom when I would have thought that anyway. Well, he wants to be able to suck on a jewel while he's at the bar with pretend you. Pretend you brought it with you. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. like to me, it's like you don't even care enough to lie. Right. Um, so it's a double That's deal how break. bad the addiction is. That's well, it's either how bad the addiction is or how little you care about what I think about you. Right. What do yeah. you think? I wouldn't be. If they left to go get anything, I think they had an issue with it. They left to go get pizza. Right. They left to go get, um, <laughs> what are you talking about me? <laughs> the, the minute <laughs> You've done that, I've remember. done that. Um, I, I, at first when I saw women doing the jewel thing, I thought it looked hot. Okay. And then it got not hot for me. The minute they got big, like the minute that they were the size of this mic and people were like, <laughs> and well, you're just like, jealous because you can't smoke because of your like, right. No, I am a loser. Your Mucinex thing or something. What was it? <laughs> it's called muconium. Muconium. I'm yes. a muconium baby, yes. a survivor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to be insensitive very, towards the community. I'm very offended. Um, yeah, no, I, it wouldn't be a deal breaker for me, but I would be okay. like, I would be like, I'm with a very immature. Ah, it would be a deal breaker. It would. It would not be, into the jewels anymore. You said not into it as much. Okay. No, it doesn't look as hot to me. I, I think I wouldn't I think be. I, was, I mean, a cigarette. Would you prefer them to smoke a cigarette? Uh, if they smoked a cigarette, I'd fucking marry them right there. Really, that, that, you're looking for a smoker. I. There's <laughs> nothing hotter than a woman having a cigarette after she's had it. Oh, like angry. <laughs> Post work, work clothed like stressed, woman, like an, you, stressed having a cig I outside. Mean, to, we discussed the movie Fair Play with Jay Shetty, mm. but 
you should watch that if you get in if you're into women uh, smoking a cigarette. It's, it's in going finance. Okay, <laughs> that's my. I'd be in so hard. Just a hot babe having a cig. This broadcast in smoking <laughs> <laughs> vapes out. <laughs> now the vape would I, I guess it's a deal breaker for me because I wouldn't take them seriously. I would think that they're very immature. Yeah, and again, they like seems like they have a problem. It's funny that I saw the during the height of the jewel craze. I remember seeing like the funniest meme. It was like, um, I may have it was like, I may have my issues, but at least I'm not addicted to like a hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a US, USB, like USB yeah, 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 USB outlet or something. They did. They yeah. They never got the look right. They yeah, they could have made it look however they wanted to. They made it look like a cigarette. Right. Ooh, that would have been. I think hot. they have those. An they idea. have those. Anyway, let's do another. Uh, this, is, this podcast is not sponsored by the Jewel or, <laughs> or uh, Tobacco Lobby. I can't wait for the DM. My grandmother died of lung cancer. Yeah, I know cigarettes are bad. <laughs> That's why it's hot. You think? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Should we do another one? Yeah, let's do another one. He won't share his pizza. J and J, I love the podcast and everything you do. Oversharing, Bachelor, etc. A month into seeing a guy, I went over to his place to watch a movie and hang out. Around 10 p.m., he, he said he was ordering pizza and asked if I wanted any. I said I did not, but thank you. An hour later, the large pizza arrived, and he started eating it. After smelling the pizza and it being an hour later, I asked for a slice. He said, no, I offered to, I offered to order you some, but you didn't want any. Shocked, I laughed and asked again for one slice to no avail. He ended up eating the whole thing and did not share any. No crusts, nothing. What do you think? Would it be a red flag or a deal breaker for you? He ate and left no crumbs. I I can't stand that. Um, you ever see that TikTok comment? It's always on TikTok. No, I didn't see it. Oh, he they ate. ate. Is that Candace looks embarrassed for me? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what she is just it? Got, she just hit her face in shame. Jared, you don't watch like RuPaul's Drag Race or anything, do you? He's doing it wrong. It makes sense yeah. on RuPaul's. It's like, it's like a Is compliment, that... like saying that somebody ate. And I know no the co the co Yeah, I, here's where it people annoys do me. overdo it in the comments. I will, I will say that in comments ab about anything. Okay. What does it mean? It's they you, did... you just did a great job. Oh, you did a yeah. great job. Like, it's like no saying slay. It's like an accentuation okay. of. They I did sound a great so corny job. right okay. now, but it's like a think about you, somebody saying you slayed or something. Got it. Right. Okay. It, there's people. Listen, if I saw someone say he, if someone on, if if RuPaul said he ate and left no crumbs, I would go, yes, RuPaul. This is what RuPaul should be saying. Okay. When it's like Diane from Minnesota, uncool. Look who ate. Like Riz. and left no crumbs. I'm like, get out of here. Okay. You hack. So just this, so that's the deal breaker for you. Yeah. Right? She's, oh, you just said no. That. I just, right, said just said it about that. the pizza. Okay. It is weird to get a large pizza and go, and like on principle. Well, I mean, we're gonna find out why he supposedly said he did it, but I think it's not. It's not. You're not sharing. Get a bigger pizza just in case. Right. Well, a well, large. You you're having a large pizza. There's yeah. six, sixteen inches. Was Let's it eight slices. It's crazy. It seems you're gonna eat to, the whole thing in front of someone, right? It seems to me that this guy like well, got like, into the zone of like, well, she said she wasn't hungry. You live with the decisions you've made. Like to me, it's he doesn't want the whole pizza. He's doing this to teach her a lesson, which is a deal breaker. Yeah, that I, annoys me. I kind of agree. I was I was go straddling the line between red flag and deal breaker, like the jewel guy. Mm. I kind of think this guy has a problem. It's like, you know, do you ever hear the phrase like, you know, someone has a drug problem when they won't share their drugs? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, he snorted his Coke and left no crumbs. I mean, yeah. <laughs> He's got a problem. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I, I truly believe that. I think if someone is not sharing, they have a problem. This guy has a problem with food. Yeah. It, it's one or the other. Right. It's he has a problem with food. I got a whole pizza. It's a little OCD ish mm -hmm. where I got. So I must finish. So some people are like that with food or to me, it rang as like he's a dick trying to teach a woman a lesson, which right, which is and it's a which month into seeing worse. a guy. Right. They should. I would understand. I could sort of understand being annoyed about this. If I were with Mike um, and like he said he didn't want any food and then he asked for some of my food, it would be like annoying. But. I've been with him for a while. But like, you'd give him the like, food. Right. 
I would give it to him. I might be annoyed, but I'd get, but I'd give it to him. But it's also like, that could be more of a reason to be annoyed. You're a month in, you should still be like trying to woo someone. Right. And if it's something she does. Order, order another pizza. Right. <laughs> it's just weird. So we're going to find out the answer here. Yeah. Okay. So were you reading this or was I? You were. Okay. <laughs> it was not for me as that meant. It, it, so it was not a red flag or a deal breaker for me as that man is now my husband of almost three years. Oh, my God. Since that incident, Sounds like a fun marriage. Right? Hey. Very generous. Just, uh, why didn't yeah. you let us read the end? <laughs> oh, uh, no. Oops, uh, uh, since that well, incident, which I, of course, reference all the time, he orders extra food for me, even if I say I don't want any to avoid sharing. Compromise, I guess. When I told him I was writing in, he said I had to include that he was working out ferociously at the time and knew exactly how much he needed to eat to feel full. Keep up the amazing work, a hungry batch. I don't think that's a good excuse. No, it's not a good excuse. It's it's also more towards your side of things than mine. This wasn't him teaching her a lesson based on the story. Right. Based on the end of the story, it wasn't him being like, no, you know, him being fucking Gary V. Yeah. You know, you didn't ask, so you don't get. Right. You will learn for next time. It was more him being like, a little OCD ish. Like, right. A little like bit of I, a I, thing with about food. You knew you exactly had to have one large pizza. What are you, Kevin McAllister? He's got a little bit of a problem. There's a little issue here. Yeah. And he's still defending it to this day. Right. And if that's truly the case, I mean, everyone has their issues. The fact that you have like a little bit of a compulsion around food, that's not the issue, but it's more like, then order more food. Well, it's that now they order more, which is, doesn't seem like a solution. It just seems like someone's not backing down right. to like, like I don't Go know a large, <laughs> a large cheese pizza. Like I I don't know. It's like a it's a listen. I am not a. Can you eat a, a large like an entire pizza? I, I came in here once after being hung over. I can eat half of a pizza. Half of like a, I can eat four slices of pizza. I. Yeah, that's right, yeah. for listen. I could eat a large. I'm not above eating yeah. this amount of pizza. I I know as a person with food issues themselves. Mm -hmm. That if someone was like wanted a slice and they didn't want one before, I would be annoyed, but I would be like, Jared, give her the pizza. You're gonna wake up in the morning still full from these seven slices. <laughs> you know, this is you should you should not yeah, have a month the whole pizza. in. <laughs> right. Like, it's like do something here. And listen, the only thing I can empathize with the guy on is if this was something over the course of the month, she always says she's not hungry and always eating his food. Mm-hmm. I'd be a little bit like. I think it was like cute. Like I'll just order more. It's like the little is, little meal. She didn't actually. want Ellie the fries. Now fries. she's eating your fries. Yeah. After the first time, I agree. I think that's the one thing he did right. Like now he just always orders more. Right. I think well, it's crazy to eat an entire pizza in front of someone. Right. <laughs> when they asked for right? a slice. Not to just think like oh they're gonna eat. If someone is <clears throat> sitting next to me while I'm eating any amount. Yeah. Of food, I'm gonna offer them. No, like, it's bizarre. It's right? bizarre. It's actually. A crazy person. It's very like. Can you imagine eating an entire pizza next to someone, anyone, while, while the, no in the Betch's office and just offering no one? Anything? Listen, I'm self conscious having two, you know, skinny pop bags in here. <laughs> Everyone's like waiting on me to tape. Do I, you want some? <laughs> does anyone Offer. want a kernel? Let's do one. All right, more. let's do it. J and J, huge fan for years. Something weird just happened to me, and I don't know if it's a red flag or a deal breaker. Match with a guy on Hinge. The conversation then moved to Instagram. We set up a date for this weekend. Why does the conversation move from Hinge to Instagram? I don't like that. It's not a good sign. It's someone checking out to make sure they look like their pictures. Right. And then they're exclusively messaging on there. Yeah, it's all. Uh, well, I guess she'll explain this. I gave him my number to add me on WhatsApp to further iron out the details. The date details. He's European, hence the WhatsApp, LOL. Those Europeans love their WhatsApp. They do love it. When he messaged me on WhatsApp, he sent me a screenshot of my contact and his phone. In the screenshot, he added one of my Hinge photos to my contact, but he edited the photo. He zoomed in on me and added a black or white filter to the photo. Oh black and white God. filter to the photo. Oh, so this is like recent because this is like in the iOS update. Oh, where it gives you where a picture? Yeah, it's constantly asking me if I want to switch your name to like all caps... Yeah, you gotta picture. put my my picture's good. Is it? Do it right now. Ready? Let me see. I'll call you. Mine's actually hilarious. I, I, don't th I think it's funny. But it has all caps. It says new contact name. Yeah, yeah I'm all caps. That's how I live my life. All right. Big time. Well, okay. I didn't okay, realize so this now was I'll all call on you. purpose. Show so the much. camera. All right. Send Listen. My friend, my buddy, he has his set. He says he's got he made his picture so good. 
that he has like literally co- has gotten like job contacts what? from it. Like, do people I have a picture? Have no- oh, I'm I'm on. Hold on, I gotta go off the air. I didn't even mode. think of doing that. I mean, he said that his picture, his picture is so striking. It's coming right now. Ready? Yeah, you don't have anything. Um, I didn't. Oh well. Look okay. at me. That's me. That is serious. Put it up to the YouTube. Where's the- <laughs> there we go. That's wow, right. that is a big picture. When his comes up, screen. it's like, it's like him. And it's like, and I always say to him, I go, this picture is unbelievable. Picture. Yeah. Wow. And you can really make it look really good. Like, that's a pretty Wait, good, how did you, you know, make this, that picture? It, it'll walk you through it. So his picture is like. Okay. You guys have this? Do you have this? You know what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, you well. can, and it, it helps you make a Everyone's really. Everyone's two steps ahead of me. Yeah, you got to do this. Okay. But the way this guy made her picture, I mean, like, for her, he basically, if I'm her. Well, Finish That's email. a good okay. okay I'm attaching a screenshot of my original hinge picture, uh, as well as the modified one. But please don't share these publicly. We haven't yet. Okay. No. <laughs> I don't. We won't. What? Yeah, you could share my picture. I don't know what to think. His texts are in French, but roughly translated. When he sent the photo, he said, "Clearly, this photo is incredible." And he also appeared to have deleted another message that I never saw. Red flag or deal breaker. He's pretty hot, and the conversation has been great thus far. So I'm still gonna go out with him. But I, but now I can't help to feel like he's slightly unhinged. Love you guys so much, XO. What do I, you think? I okay. So just for the audience, he took the picture. He made it black and white. Um, in my right opinion, he made her a better dating profile picture. Oh, because like, he like because he cropped out all the other yeah, people. Yeah, in, in one of them, she's like at a party, and like people are milling it's the around. Same picture. Yeah, but you yeah. don't think that's a better pick? The black and white yeah. version is, like, much better? Like, I, I, I like the color on the original, but I'm saying the black and right. white one. I mean, it's a great picture. She looks great. Um, yeah, she's hot. Yeah, there's yeah. no doubting that. I mean, I think, yeah, I would agree that I would think he was kind of unhinged, too. Like, why is he adding a picture of me to his phone? Uh, right? I, I don't even save someone's number until, <laughs> like, we've fully gone on, like, two dates. Here's the only defense I'll give him. These, when you make a contact and you save someone, now these pictures, this picture He's is more. No, it? no, but he he edited it in the, like, it's the same reason my picture looks the way mine does. Okay. It's in the parameters of iOS. Like, it, it actually okay. walks you along to make a picture that looks this good. I think it is black and white. It is very like dramatic. I, I'll give you, you know, I maybe I agree. I'm cynical, but to me, he's saving the picture from Instagram or other thing because he's texting a lot of women and he wants to remember which one this is. Fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And to me, it almost it speaks to like too physical too soon. Okay. Even though he's not saying anything physical, I mean, he's saying she looks great in the picture, but to me, it's like it's a little too much. I I can understand that. I can also understand that like this is what they asked him to do. Okay. So it's like, it, it, like when it gives you the picture, it goes, okay, you can fit in this little box. So now he's in the little box. Then it goes, do you want it to be black and white? He goes, yeah, sure. Like, I don't think it was like okay, this much no, of an art project. I haven't made one. I, when you do yours, you'll see it like okay. walks you through. Like just, if you do it now, you'll see it walks you through. So like, to me, I agree. To me, to save a picture for someone's contact, yes. That on its own is right. a little much. But the editing thing you're thinking is like prompts. It's prompted, prompted and it kind of walks you Would into Would you that. save a picture to someone's contact? No. But their contact, you know, when it's you. It's a little creepy. When think. you change yours, you're going to update. I'm going to update yours. You're going to be on It's going to prompt you to update yeah. it. Right. But you're not selecting a photo no, no, for no, no, me. No, no, I don't go. It's a little too fast <laughs> too soon, I, I think. Fair. I, like, for some reason, maybe because he's French, it gave me like Taken vibes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have a particular set of skills. I don't know. He's like taking I can the crop picture. your photo and make it a better dating profile he's picture. picture. He's got it with like my name. It just seems like he yeah. has like too much info. Like he's like profiling me a little bit. But look some, at mine. I'm. Reason. I mean, I'm. I'm. I'm saying this again because like, like look at the whole, mine. Like the old like taken thing. It's like oh, cabs are so expensive. <laughs> Do you want to share? And right. Then, yeah. No, he's. Uh, this guy's good. He's he, like. I mean, look at my picture. One more time. Just like, it okay. does. You just want me to. You just want the audience yeah. to see how good it is. <laughs> But like the blue background, yeah, like that I mean, looks, looks like I put more thought into you it than I did. You should put someone from your new photo shoot in. I probably are should. A, are you wearing shirtless? Shirtless, wow. baby. 
Someone might get that from me and go, why the fuck is he shirtless? I in mean, the if you weren't a comedian, I, I might say, like, why is he shirtless in the picture? <laughs> why is he have a mustache? Are you guys shirtless in your pictures? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jorge's got enough buttons undone. He could look shirtless right now. It's, a, it's true. I Listen, maybe I should shave this mustache. Maybe I mean, not. the shirtless picture <laughs> and the mustache... Again, you're really giving I don't give a fuck vibes, which That's is nice. Right. I'm in my extent. I don't give a fuck era. When a woman says that, they're like, oh, yes, queen. Well, it's funny. Everyone says the same thing about being in your 30s. They're like, in your 30s, you don't even care about like what anyone thinks. It's like, yeah, we all still do. Yeah, we know, do. Like <laughs> I care about everything. Yeah, I think yeah. it's like in your 80s, you don't care what anyone thinks. Right. The minute um, I 40s can't and see 30s are the best. It's like you just want to like. Pretend you feel bet like that you don't care that you're in your 30s or your 40s. Right. The 30s and 40s are they're spent. Yeah, I totally agree. I'll stop caring when my balls hit the floor. There you go. Balls. <laughs> That's going to be my T-shirt I'm going to sell on the boardwalk. And then you could wear Atlantic that. City. You wear that shirt. You wear yep. the ass man hat. You have the mustache and the shirtless picture. And you let, you know. That's how I live anyone my life. Anyone who will have you at that point will be your wife. Jordana, I was depressed as we started this <laughs> podcast. And now you've painted a picture of me that doesn't really make me feel any what better. is the opposite of therapy <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding That's no this I, I i tease because this was a, because this was an undoing I, you can but here's the thing i tease because you can actually i think pull it off thank you so if you couldn't it would be mean but because you can it's a good point Thank you for telling me how I should feel. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Tell you what you feel. Right. Um, well, we solved dating again. We did it. Back with a special Jay Shetty episode on Sunday. And we'll see you guys then. Bye. Boom. The U Up Podcast is produced by Jorge Morales Pico, Sean Kilby, and Candice Maniga. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico and Shannon Sassone. Social media by Candice Maniga. Guest booking by Ali Friedlander. Be sure to follow at u.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.